Yo, what's up? We here for another episode of Father of Fraternity Podcast. I am DJ Duro, aka your favorite. I have my brothers here with me, starting off to the right of me. Hey, my man Norm Strick. Find me at Norm Strick anywhere, Instagram, Twitter. What's going on, people? Yeah, we are live from the barbershop. I'm Jeremiah. You can find me on Instagram at I underscore Rockwell. And where is this barbershop that you speak of? This barbershop is located at 417 Agler Road, Columbus, Ohio. 432. Yeah, 43230. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I got so, you. <laughs> make sure you um, come holler at us if you're in the city of Columbus. We need a good fresh cut. We got a, um, a barbershop full of good people that will not only entertain you, but will take care of you the way you need to. Indeed. Quick commercial plug real quick. Yeah, <laughs> but that's where we are. This is Barbershop Talk. Father of Fraternity is um, something that we will make sure we speak to fathers, speak about fathers, and speak about our perspective of being a father, being black fathers, not yes, just sir. regular fathers. Because yep. when you put what we are, it changes things. And um, that's the main thing that we want to discuss when we do this podcast. So um, enough of the formalities. Hey. Every barbershop has a topic that whenever you sit in a chair, something comes up. Right. Um, if you're never, if you've never been in a black barber shop, we talk about stuff. Rather, it's sports, love, religion, Music, relationship, yeah. or your ugly ass. You know, like we don't talk about stuff. <laughs> hey, <laughs> and don't come. Hey, you better come in here correct too. You better. You, you better. better. You definitely go get John. Don't down. you go get talked about? <laughs> Just let you know. So, um, Jay, what was the topic today um, in the in the shop? Word to my man, no sharp man. He asked me a. Uh, a real deep question, and I really didn't know how to answer it. Shout out to O but Sharp. He asked me, "What was my thing?" Uh, translation: What was my passion? Like, what am I passionate about? That if I had to choose between that thing or anything else, I would always choose my passion. Like, what is my passion and what drives me? Think about that. And Dude, I was I mean, trying to think. Question, though, it, it really is very deep. Because you, I mean, you were here, Daryl, and it kind of threw me for a, a, a curve. But I wanted to answer it politically and give me give a real good answer, but I couldn't think. And so my initial answer was I'm passionate about more or less myself, like expressing my thoughts. Mm-hmm. I, I'm an MC, a poet. I act a little bit, so I like being on stage, translating energy to the people and then getting energy back from the people. Right. That's really what I like doing. But more than that, and there's other things that I like to do. I shoot pool and things. Right. But more than that, I thought about it later. And my family, honestly, is my passion. Girl. I thought about that when it came up, too. It's like, you know, there's really nothing else I don't want to be at this moment more than a, a good father. A good right. father, but still a good yeah. brother, yeah. a good husband, yep. all of those things. So my family really is my passion. And I wish that I'd have thought of the answer as I was talking to O, but I was thinking like activity wise. Right. Like I like to shoot pool, mm-hmm. I like to skate. I do those things. I, so, I cut hair. So activity wise, out of if if we're not talking about family, because that would seem a little cliche. But I'm, I'm not taking away from your answer. But if it was activity wise, what would be your thing? Oh, DJ Dur- Pause. There's, there's two two things that I love to do. I love to skate. I bounce. You know what I mean. Oh, yeah, we skate miles, Tuesday, Sunday, any days that they have a special like up at the skate games. ring. <laughs> yeah, for real. We out east. We up north. Anywhere. Yeah. So I skate. I roll. My whole family rolls, and we go. Or I'm shooting pool. I'm shooting pool, and all of those things is 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 fellowship involved. It's a challenge involved. It's gratifying. Mm-hmm. All of those. It's it's everything that I need all in one sport. Mm-hmm. Shooting pool and skating. It's, it's, those is my two things. Imagine, aside from love, my family, I used to love to skate, man. I mean, you we used know? to go to a roller drum in Cleveland. Yeah, uh, in, in Euclid, man. Every Friday and Saturday, my mom was uh, the mom that she used to pick up part time jobs just so we can get stuff for free. Yeah, right. I remember my mom. She's was, smart. Hey, you kind of get a second hey, job that got resources. For man, <laughs> worked at the skate rink. We was getting free and get half off on food. Oh yeah. So man, I used to love skating, man. I miss those days. Man, skating is really a, a fun family thing because. Mm-hmm. My family used to skate like every other Saturday, and I mean that was that was fun. My my dad would be striding. Yeah, like he was he was the man. He would do some spins and and, yeah. and, and do circles around you and and make you feel like you really wasn't the man. <laughs> you know what I noticed? <laughs> Being from Illinois, skating, skating is big in Ohio. My dad skating from Chicago and dancing. 
Yeah. It's like yeah. Illinois and Ohio. It's like that in Detroit, too. Like all three of us. Yeah. We have in sync with dancing and And skating. everybody has their own style. Mm-hmm. Yep. But from seeing what I see, skating is big yeah. here. That's yeah. It's like a culture. It's here. a big thing in, in, in Dayton also. Mm-hmm. Like Dayton, I've never been to Dayton yeah. skating. Uh, you would love it. Because a lot of Dayton people come up to Icy Hot. Word. But okay. it's a it's a big thing down there too because we ain't got nothing. Yeah. Word. I heard y'all had a two level, like mm-hmm. a two story skating ring. Yeah, we do. Oh, it's yeah. incredible. Yeah, y'all so, skating, skating. Yeah, yeah, we <laughs> skating, yeah, skating, skating. skating. <laughs> so Norm, what's what is your thing? Man, I was trying to think about it when we brought up this topic, and I would say I have a passion to help people, mm. but more so financially. Right now, me being in the banking industry, I see so many people that have no clue about finances, have no clue about money management. Wow. And I'm not the greatest. You right. know, I'm very knowledgeable and I do pretty well. But other than that, I have a passion to help others that don't know, you know, how to manage their money, how to build their credit up. And that's something I would do just because. Right, for free. I, yeah, I got my sister on it, my little brother I'm working on his. My other little sister, I'm trying to get hers together. Like, these are things that I'm working on to do for my family and hopefully others in the community. But that and, um, man, I love to cook. Love to cook, man. Right. I really I really enjoy cooking, man. I make my own recipes sometimes. Uh, I make my own little sauces. You know, I, I just, I've seen your plates on yeah, Instagram, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Instagram, <laughs> at Norm Strick. Yeah. I got a couple. Yeah, I got a couple little plates up there. Yeah. I've been kind of cooling out on it, but um, my don't, Instagram. Don't. Don't yeah, I know, on it. I know, I know. I really love to cook, and um, my wife knows it too, so she takes advantage of that. Right. So I'm always cooking, and uh, she get to chill a little bit. But yeah, that's something I would do for free if I didn't have to worry about like money. I would not even be a chef, just cook. Yeah, right. you know what I mean. I do it all, so that's my thing. My DJ answer, Duro. My answer yeah. earlier was music. And, of course, me being a DJ, you would say, like, yeah, of course. But it's not just the act of DJing, mm-hmm. but it's, like, how the music came to be. Mm-hmm. Like, how where the samples came from, mm-hmm. how the instrumentation happened, the chord progressions. Yeah. And I don't even know how to read music. But I love the fact that somebody can read a sheet, a sheet. of paper and can make a sound out of that. Right. It's incredible. Like, it's just crazy. And then with me doing so much... I do a lot of research. Like I get really fixated into certain genres of music. Mm -hmm. So with me paying attention to a lot of Stevie Wonder stuff really recently, Stevie Wonder can play instruments, sing, do everything, (laughs) play the harmonica and and he can uh, like sing in different languages. Like how how do you even learn a different language if you can't see? Like if you even think about that stuff, like how would you learn another language? You would read it. But this nigga is not yeah, he able can't to see. do that. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess you would hear it. Yeah, you know, yeah. of course, you have to get it interpreted. But it's just thinking of what the people who have the musical minds and musical geniuses like that blows my mind. It's incredible, like right. how Pharrell talked about seeing sounds. Yeah, like how he can see music, yep. visualize it, and I, I just it, love it. Yeah, he's so creative too, because you could tell in his fashion and everything he does, it shows in his music. But I think that's what the passion is. Is to to do something is one thing, but when you're fully involved, like all the way 100% yeah. engaged, Correct. your mind thinks differently about yep. the things. Mm-hmm. Like I said, most people go skating and they just throw their skates on and go in a circle. Right. But for me, I'm looking at it's physics. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, as The more I go, the more I'm interested in math. You know how you in math class and you're like, when am I ever going to use this? Right, but right. But now I'm understanding, like if I move at this speed, by the time I reach this point in time, mm-hmm. I'll be, you know what I mean? So yeah. I'm, I can avoid crashes because I can slow my speed because yeah. I can see time ahead of time. Right. Just like shooting pool. I can see moves in advance yeah. so I know exactly how to hit a shot. And that's what's gratifying for me. I understand fully what you're saying about the music, man. If you get fully immersed in the music mm-hmm. and close your eyes, you can start seeing it the It will instance, take you somewhere directly. If there's a song that you listen to when you had your first crush or your first heartbreak mm-hmm. back in like middle school, if yep. you hear that song and close your eyes, you'll be like, oh, man, I'm right back there. Because I have a few songs that, that do that, and there's nothing else. That will, there's no smell, there's no, there's no food, there's no nothing else that will take me back to where I was when I heard a certain song. Man. It would spark that time travel. Exactly, yep. and that's just something that is, 
I thank God for having that connection to stuff because everybody has their own thing. Mm-hmm. But mine is music, and I'm, I'm glad I was blessed with that because it just takes me anywhere. And we say talk about music, too. Like, I have an older sister uh, who's seven years older than me. So when she was growing up, all the stuff she was listening to, mm-hmm. I was listening to. Yeah. So she was heavy into, like, Mace and Total and Mary J. Blige. Yeah, so yeah. my soul has always been different. Yeah. And I've always been somewhat of an outsider with my friends because, you know, they listen to a lot of trappy trap, you right. know, a lot of this stuff that I, I, I can't feel. You know what I mean? So it's I get a couple laughs when I try to hook them to the uh, to the internet album, the new joint, mm-hmm. and they had they got that number that song, the second song, it sounded like a skate song. Man, they try to laugh me out of the group chat, but I'm yeah, like, geez. I was bouncing to that, you know, exactly. that songs. But music can shape you. Oh my goodness, and it and it hurts sometimes too because it's certain songs I can't listen to because mm-hmm. I think about my mom. Yeah, and that like, dear mama. Um, What's uh, Jay's song? Uh, not song, song cry. No, nah, not song cry. Mama though. loves me. Man, man. Hey, nope. Kitchen can't table. E- yeah. Where I hone my skills. Can't even. Can't even listen to it. And man. just think it about hurts. what music does to you and what it'll do to our kids. Mm-hmm. Like we had that responsibility as parents to really give, like, open their eyes and their ears to new music, mm-hmm. and think about what they're gonna see you dancing to, like. In the kitchen with your with your wife, right? Like, what do you think your your kids are gonna remember of y'all skating to? And For that's real. something that you just don't even remember that you skated to this, but it's it imprinted into their mind. Like, oh, daddy was really getting down to right. this song. My so, son's face when Frankie Beverly comes on <laughs> before <laughs> I let go. Hey. My son's face, what? <laughs> like that's my song, right. Dad. Hey, that like, whole yellow boy, you eleven, 11 years, years old. Hey, <laughs> my song, but he feel it though. <laughs> yeah. He feel it just like we all do. Because yeah. soon as that beat drop. Dun, 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 dun. And we uh, singing it. What? Singing it. Everywhere. Immediately. It's funny, man. I had a moment. Uh, what's today? Mo- yesterday. Sunday. Sunday night, we get home, turn on YouTube. We watching Michael Jackson videos. You can really get lost oh, yeah. oh, my watching goodness. Michael Jackson you videos on oh, YouTube. <laughs> we watch Thriller. And I'm not even thinking. My daughter's never seen Thriller. She knows the song, but she's never seen the video. Right. So we sitting down watching Thriller. Yeah. It's dark. A little scary. Turn it on, and it's so theatrical the way it starts. Yeah. It starts with the when he turns into a werewolf. Mm-hmm. My daughter's scared out of her mind, <laughs> scared. And then the, the song comes on, and you see like, all of that fear go away. Yeah, a relief. Only until he turns into the zombie, she gets right. scared. She yeah. goes through the whole rise and fall of the emotions. That's crazy. I remember when I was a kid, they had to make a thriller on, yeah, I had and to, so I, I got had to, to see the behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. But still, when they showed the movie at the end of the behind uh, the behind the scenes, mm-hmm. I got scared all over. My little and brother to was see like my that. daughter go through that same thing was a trip to me. It was almost like full circle. Yep. I had to tell her it's just a movie. Yeah, you, that's that's fake. Look, <laughs> look that's, right that's here. makeup. Look, that's not Michael. And, Jackson. That, and as fathers, that's what we got to do. It's like that. We, right? we have to enlighten them and just say, look, it, even though they their minds are racing so much and so much imagination that you have to calm them down sometimes. Like I said last time it was. My son's scared of the dark right now, and it's just ghosts and stuff un- under the bed. Like, it's, look, man, nothing under there. But. Right. Yo, since the last episode, my daughter became scared, just like how you talking about your mm-hmm. your son. Her my daughter's now just trying up. to, yes, she, she like, it's a monster. I'm like, what do you know about a monster? Yep. Mm-hmm. And, like, she's just scared of, now she was scared of the the, the steps. I had, to, I had to spend 10 extra minutes this morning to walk her past the steps to our doorway because she was scared. <laughs> Yeah, it happens, man. Like, bro, where does this coming from? But okay, does it stop though? You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't does it stop so. as I you get started. older? <laughs> like as we talk about men in in fatherhood, yeah. general, yeah. are you it, fears that you have? You right. know what I mean? Right. Do you does does that stop as a child, or do you grow older and just have different fears? Now I'm not scared of the dark. Right. Now I'm scared of failing. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? What what fears? That's going to be the topic of this episode. Is fear when it comes to fatherhood. So right. I appreciate you bringing that up. I think that's going to be a, a good thing for us to touch on because fatherhood is its own thing mm-hmm. for men, period. But for black men, we have our own issues prior to being fathers, Whoa. when we're about to become a father, like when we get that announcement, and just fatherhood, period. Yep. There's a lot of stuff that comes up. So we're going to talk about that. But if you're listening now, make sure you um, – Hashtag us. Reach out to us. Let us know you're listening. Um, you'll be able to listen to us on all social media platforms. You'll be able to find us any certain any way that you listen. But I just want you all to get involved. Let us know also yeah. what your thing is. What is the thing that you will do um, without having to get paid for it? What's something that you love that much? 
because I want to get y'all to um, interact with us. But um, before we get into that fear topic, let's see. What are y'all listening to? We just talked about music. What are y'all listening to? Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> you won't be here, so you good. What what kind of music are y'all listening to? And then we get into our topic. You the, you the, y'all, y'all the MCs, man. Let's y'all the do music, it. man. Listen, yeah. as I get older, I grew up rap, 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 right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Soul, funk, R and B. As I get older, jazz music is so Soothing, perfect yeah. for me. Who are you jazz. listening to on jazz? Are you just man. listening to certain instruments, or is it Listen, people? Uh, Wes Montgomery. Mm. Uh, Thelonious Monk is mm, very, Thelonious very. Monk. That's that's my Thelonious favorite Monk dude. Is a, yeah, the way he incredible. plays the piano sounds like something. It sounds like is he's talking right. with the keys. So I listen to Thelonious Monk like closely. That's really my favorite guy. But it's yeah. it's a bunch of artists. You can give me something and I'll listen to it. Anything, anything that has to do with just music, instrumentation, no words. Let me have my own feelings. Let me create mm-hmm. my own words. But I like to just be still and listen to music peacefully. Yep. You know what I mean? I used to have speakers in my car all the time. Every car I had had speakers in it. I, low key, I miss my speakers. I'm going to be honest. I, I, miss, I miss my speakers. Man. We all been there. And now I got the Jeep. I don't have speakers in my car. And it's so it's, it's pleasant. Uh-huh. I find myself speeding less. I find mm. myself with an attitude less. Mm. Everywhere I go is just nice and steady. I'm always on time now. Jazz gets me, gets me balanced. Dope. Yeah. For real. That's very dope. dope. I that's might need to listen to it a little yeah, bit more right, often. My damn self. I mean, that's Think what we need. If you're listening to like some cool music, some jazz, or some class, you're not speeding. Right. You no. can't speed to jazz. It's impossible. What y'all rushing for, man? Yeah. What y'all, what what y'all rushing for? Hey, hey out, if you man. get up early and leave early, you won't <laughs> right. have to rush. You, you must feel your last occurrence. Right. Right. You need a better job. You ain't right. nobody out flipping You on that third right up, ain't you? I know he is. You ain't flipping a bird, cutting nobody off with no jazz. You ain't hitting and running nobody. Never. Right? Man, no, music, I mean, it's so incredible, like, the different vibes and feels you get. Because I think about when we was in the club, we was first kicking it, man. Yeah. Uh, Definitely Get on my level, is. you yeah. know what I mean? When we hear um, so many different get songs. Get on my level. Hey, get, <laughs> hey, no limit. You know what I mean? Like, this stuff, man, you talk about get you going crazy. Crump. Man, I mean, crump music, man, that stuff was crazy when we was growing up. But, like, now. What you listening to now? Now I'm listening to a lot of R&B. Yeah. A lot of R&B. Um, actually, I. I know everybody not a big Drake fan, but I've been listening to Drake a lot. Um, oh, man, be honest with yourself. I mean, I, I mean, I, I love that album. Ain't I love what he does. Yeah, hey, listen, this this, this, this podcast is like about Drake. confidence and being secure with yourself. Yes, I'm very secure in my music ears and what I like. Yeah. Ain't nobody tell me different. There it is. But um, I've been revisiting uh, Division album too, man. Division album so dope. Ah, uh, you heard yeah. that the Division? I haven't. Man, if you, you might think it's you hit, yeah. Division is a good album. Yeah, <laughs> Brandy album. says it's a good album too. Yeah, so. listen, yeah. very very dope album. It is. It's very dope. Um, and then a little sleeper, um, Alina Baraz, a Baraz, Baraz, her joint. Like that, yeah. Oh my goodness, very very soulful. She from Cleveland originally too. Say word. Yeah, she. Um, I don't want to say the wrong ethnicity, but I think she might be Puerto Rican because in Cleveland it's only black, white, and Puerto Ricans. Right. But. Uh, <laughs> But no, her album was very dope too. So a lot of R and B, and I'll throw a little Drake or um, Travis Scott right now. We got a fire album too. So do you consider Drake R and B? No, I consider him an artist. All right, like he's not rap, he's not R and B, and he's not pop. He's all of them. I always try to figure a category. Mm, there's no we category. Talk, for him. We talking a barbershop, and that whole writing your own rhymes MC thing came about. You can't put him on a lyricist. Yeah. You can't yeah, put him on a top not lyricist. In that category. He's no. he has, bigger than that category. He has he good is. music. He makes good songs. He makes good right. music. Yeah, he does. basically what it is. It and took me a while to admit I like Drake. <laughs> yeah, I'm, out loud. Well, it's hard because <laughs> well, I like Drake. <laughs> once again, we talked about being men, being secure. Right? Secure. You got oh, well, you got to be tough. You got to be strong. You got to like this, this, and, and this. And he's the epitome right. of emotional, right. soft, in touch with his feminine yeah, side. That's saying? that's what we saw it as, and we got to be able to. That's what we have talked about. Mm-hmm. Change that whole. Can I macho, share? Can I share? Muscle, with you? Mindset, share, yeah. share this over here. So, man, <laughs> talk about it. Me and my wife was going through it right, and we was coming back from. Uh, from Hagerstown, Maryland. I had my nieces in the car, and my nieces was DJing. They had the, the iPod. The they oh, playing. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. cool, right? <laughs> Shout out so to my, Maryland, my, my second niece, home. My niece Soraya put on Drake, and it's the one. Uh, Kiki? No, 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 it was uh, 
I'm just too good for you. Oh, I'm yeah. Just don't understand. Dude, that, hey. I was grooving it. <laughs> hey, that's all. <laughs> Drake got some bangers. I was grooving to it. Everything he was saying was like, Drake, you were so right. But the thing is, you, <laughs> you know, so right. a reason why I like Drake, because Kanye was my favorite artist until recent incidents where I just, I can't really rock with Kanye. But um, Drake, he talks about stuff that I've been through. For real. I've been through girls, work, and a little bit of money here and there. He, you know, Of course, he got more, but. Like, I don't know about selling drugs. I got family that did. I didn't do it. Like, I don't know about, you know, having all these chains and all this other stuff. Like, I, I know girls and what music sound like. So, he talks to me, and, you know, I, I feel him. But And if you've been in a relationship, you got to know that. Oh, yeah. He's, he's speaking from that perspective. Exactly. On the female and yeah. the male's perspective. He's, right. he's telling both sides of the story. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, one of them other instances about who I'm listening to is like, mm, I've talked about it on Twitter, and it's due Ooh. to Pharrell's production. I, I, I know where he's going with this. But Ariana Grande's Ariana. last album really? is low-key fire. It just came came out this week? or because, last week? Yeah, Friday. Like, yeah. she's a pop artist. I've never listened to her before. But I, I'm a big Pharrell nerd production fan right so i saw that he produced seven songs and i'm like wow. seven jams i'm about to all them jam to listen to all of them <laughs> right so all of the songs that he produced produced jams it's only like 12 songs on the cd it's only two songs i don't like on there so mm. by, mm. by so that 10 out i of like 12, it yeah. i like it so um i've been listening to her um what other r&b i've been listening to old stuff just like nothing but old music i listen to stuff that you will listen to when you clean up yeah yeah, yeah. That's the best, though, Clean man. up Saturday music. Soul Clean up Saturday yeah. music. Yeah, soul music. And our That's kids got to know that, too. Got to. We got gotta to keep that music alive, y'all. Oh. Like, keep it alive. Yes. Aretha, R.P. Aretha. Yes. You know, recent passing, man. Much like, respect. So much Aretha been played the past couple of days for yeah. me, uh, my wife, you know, everybody, all the aunties and them, everybody right. playing Aretha. So we got to keep that going. Make sure you hit us up. Let us know what you're listening to. Let us know what you're doing. Um, give us some topics you want us to um, hit on. You can hit us up either personally on our um, social media pages, or you can email us at fatherhoodfraternity at gmail.com. We have a Instagram, Father of Fraternity. If you have some pictures, tag us. If you're a father, you got pictures with your kids, tag that. Yeah. We'll post you up. We want to make sure that the media sees more black fathers in this space because you usually just see us in different, you know, Doing different things, right? They need to. It needs to be regularized. It needs to be normalized for real. And, and it needs to be positive too. It yeah. needs to be love. Show love to each other. Because we love our we love our family. They get on our yeah. nerves, but we love them. Yeah, it's all love. So the topic for discussion today, as we alluded to, um, we're going to talk about fear. Hmm. Fear as a black man, as a black father, um, how we deal with our own fears, how we deal with our ki- our kids' fears. And just what comes around it. Mm. So um, I feel that it's something that is very necessary. And I'll give you all just a startup of where it made me think about this. So we talked about um, how my daughter is scared of stuff now. Mm -hmm. So, like, we're just going outside. She was with with, um, my mom this weekend. We was going outside. But for some reason, she ran away and, and just cried and went to the corner. I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, what's wrong? Like, you all right? So, like I told y'all, I get down to her level. I look her in the eye, like, what's going on? Tell me what's going on. She's like, scared. I'm like, scared of what? Like, she's like, scared. And then points, points to, like, the doorway. I'm like, you scared of that? Mm-hmm. Like, come on, let's go over there. Let's see. I'm like, it's not over there. It's nothing to be scared of. Right. So, we walk over there. We go through the door. And then she runs out the door and runs off to the side, like, on the porch. I'm like, why are you scared? Mm-hmm. I didn't understand. I could be like, I could downplay it. Mm-hmm. But the thing I did is I grabbed her, I held on to her, I showed her that everything's okay. I'm like, your daddy will not let you get hurt. Your father's here, no matter what. I will not let you get hurt. No, you have nothing to be scared of. And then that replays in my mind, like, what am I scared of? Right. What is my father holding on to me and telling me that I have nothing to be scared of? But wow. every day I have some type of fear, whether it's about me mm-hmm. or being a father. Word. And I just want to start off with what are some of our biggest fears? I'll, I'll give a couple of mine, and then, Jay, I'll let you say a couple of your fears as a father and then Norm. And I'm going to read some off that. Um, I asked this question in the Fatherhood Fraternity Facebook group, mm-hmm. and I got some answers from there. So my first fear as a father is just 
am I going to be around? Mm. Like, am I going to be around to be able to teach her what she needs to know? And that's deep, man. Am I, am, am I going to even be here to be a father? And if I leave, what's going to happen? The second biggest fear is, am I putting her in the right position to be able to be whoever she needs to be? Mm-hmm. Like whatever God's plan is for her, I know that he'll do it, but I don't want to get in the way. Mm-hmm. I don't want to have my own hard-headed mind push her into something that's not what her destiny is. And I don't want me to get pushed back or pushed away because I'm not leading her, allowing her to be in her destiny. It's a lot of people that do that too push their kids into yes. stuff that they're not really destined to be yes like this whole father's living through their sons to be athletes all of the time like your son can't be nothing but an athlete like why can't we have more doctors more engineers why can't we allow them to find what they're passionate about and follow that dream you know it's 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 crazy that's crazy jay what's some of your your fears as a father that's just come to mind i'm sure like something popped up when Definitely, and it's, of course, it's the obvious, man, the obvious. You fear failure. You fear letting your family down, not being able to provide, not being able to protect them in the, uh, in the face of emergency, in the face of danger, not being able to protect them. Uh, on a simple level, not being able to just do your job as a father. Like, I mean, say if it was this. Say if I can't even give the I can give an example of my grandfather because my grandfather is who I look up to. It's who my father looks up to, right? And my grandfather really let us down. He had the opportunity to save us all and because of his pride did not. And it's a very deep topic to me, man. I really don't even want to discuss it, but that's my fear is ending up like my grandfather. Mm-hmm. So my grandfather was so proud and still is to this very day, so proud that he'd rather die alone than to live with his family. You know what I'm saying? Yep, to, get all, to get all the way into it, the, uh, my grandfather and grandmother have been together since they were teenagers, since grade school in Mississippi. They were from, both from Leland, Mississippi. Times got bad down there, so my grandfather moves my grandmother and my father up to Chicago, Illinois, for a better way. They move up in the 60s. All through the 60s, they, they grow, 70s, 80s, 90s, all of that. They grow. Everybody grows up, has children. My father has me, everybody. I have children. Everything goes on. Life goes on. And just over time, these are things that I didn't know, but my grandmother leaves my grandfather. Didn't divorce him, but she leaves him. He was, for lack of a better word, abusive. Not physically, but verbally abusive. And just beating her down with his words. So strong and so much that she said, man, I got to go. So she takes all of her stuff, moves to Leland, Mississippi. Buys a fat crib. I'm talking about paradise mansion with a jacuzzi in the back. Buys a beautiful home. And she's like, I'm not living up there no more. The time in, uh, in Chicago is over. I'm moving to Mississippi. You're welcome to come, but you got to get your act right. you got to stop treating me like I'm less than. Treat me like an equal. Mm-hmm. I dig it. That's my grandmother, and she's no fool. Straight up. Yeah. My grandfather <laughs> feels this way, and I'm sharing with y'all, man. My grandfather's like, Psh, that woman left me. She need to come back up here. <laughs> Pride. But like we talked last week, the season is over for Chicago. Mm-hmm. For Cleveland, for Detroit, for Flint, for I mean, it's for time. It's time oh, to yeah. go. It's time to go. But my grandfather would rather stay up in that old dilapidated house and die alone from diabetes than to go and live with my grandmother. My grandmother's losing weight. She get up and walk miles a day every day. She got her girls. They get their sticks. They walk every day. <laughs> living her they, best life. And she's Let me living. Say it. living she in her a, best, life. best life. She's in a jacuzzi all the time. She eating right. She sparingly eats meat. Mm-hmm. She doing her thing. My grandfather, on the other hand, is so stubborn and so proud that he will not check himself. He will not admit to himself that he did his wife wrong and go and get his woman. The doors is open. Right. The doors is open, but he will not walk through them. Man, that and pride so, is a killer. Oh, my God. So my fear, my fear is letting my family down by not being who I'm supposed to be, not facing my fears, not addressing my emotions, not checking myself before I walk in the house. That's my biggest fear is letting my family down. You know what I mean? That's a real life thing because I still go through 
I'm new to being married. So I'm new to long relationships. Mm-hmm. I never had to check myself and my pride at the door as much as I've had to within a marriage because you just like, shit, you know, any right. other time, yeah. you know, uh, that's me. But Please. You, can't, you cannot you can't. do that. Right. My grandfather exactly. doing that right now right. in the house. Like, psh, I don't they don't do, want, if I don't they don't want to convince, that. <laughs> that's my fear. I'm, I'm scared to be like my thing. grandfather. Right. I'm scared to end up like my grandfather. Yeah. My grandfather sitting right there with his middle finger to the world. Y'all don't call me. I don't call y'all. Y'all don't come see me. I don't come see y'all. That's how he talk. If you call me, I know you want something. Yeah, what you, you want? That's what, oh my God, no. He, y'all don't nobody call me unless they need something. <laughs> unless they need something fixed, unless they want some money. And he's like slowly dying by himself. Sad, my, me and my father talked on the phone a couple days ago, man. And my father was in tears. Like my, And this is his words. He said, my father does not listen to God. He will not submit to God himself. The same man that taught me how to read the, the word will not submit to God. It's, it's, it's scary, you know what I mean? That's because now I'm seeing my grandfather get punished for his actions, and he still won't own up to it. He still won't admit. Man. And it's that, like that, man. It's crazy. <laughs> That's a legit fear. Like, That's a legit I, fear. I appreciate you sharing that, and I'm sure that somebody who's listening is going to be like, damn, I'm kind of sort of on some sour shit like mm-hmm. that. Like, maybe I need to correct myself. And that's something that we just got to continue to continuously reflect. We need self-reflection Whoa. about what's going on. Norm, what is what are some fears that can come to mind about being a father? Man, having a black boy um, son is terrifying to me. My man, Clay. Very terrifying. Um, Great, guys. Hey, Clay. Good yes, work sir. today, Clay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you know when somebody leaves yeah, the barbershop, barber you, you gotta dap them up. It's, yeah. it's out of respect. I don't care if we record; we gonna dap him out. Right? We show love. <laughs> yeah, we show love. But, but um, sorry, yeah, but endure. just just raising a black boy in America right now is terrifying. Like I'm scared for my own life. Right. But I have the knowledge to maneuver certain ways, and my fear is: Am I going to equip my son with this knowledge and the attributes to be not just follow in line but just to be successful in his own rights wow. not what the stigma is or not what america thinks what success is i want him to be happy in what he does and not have to worry about getting pulled over and you know reaching for a license and getting shot you know stuff like that that's is easy s- stuff like that's easy stuff that can happen to you man i'd have been pulled over multiple s- times exactly and for me to live and you know give my story you know, I, I had a friend that said something um, to me. Um, it, I don't, I don't, it's kind of hard for me to call people friends now because I feel like when people do you wrong or say something that's negative or doesn't impact you in a positive way, I don't feel like that's a friend. Mm. I remember when my uh, my dude told me something like, um, "You like you a, a, a get in line nigga anyway, like Ooh. like follow what the white man say anyway." Ooh. And I was like, it may have been a little ha ha moment in the chat, but that's why I struggle so much with like friendships. Cause I don't know how to react to stuff like that. People that like, you, bro, what you mean? What you mean? Like, what like, Why? What because you, I, I, you, I, I went to school. You know what I mean? I got my degree, and I'm working. That's a little self hate, though. That's a little of that person's self hate that yeah. he sees something in you that he probably doesn't have in himself. And, and I, I mean, Damn. and it's and that's difficult right there, being a father and having friends like that. Whereas there's no, um, I don't want to say no thought behind it, but. I don't think we hold ourselves and our friends up to a standard that we should. I feel like we let them slide on certain things. You know what I mean? But what examples that we've had, though. Yeah. Like, we haven't really had the fatherhood examples in our fathers to show us, like, yo, when you're a father, you need to be around these type of people. Mm-hmm. You have the examples of when you're a man, you need to be around these, and this is what you do. But what what examples do we have that when we transition into fatherhood mm-hmm. that we should be doing these certain things? We only have a few. Yep. And that's where it is kind of hard because – we we just don't. We don't talk about it. We yeah. don't say like, you know, maybe when you're a father, you may need to be around a couple educators. You may need to be around a couple lawyers. You may need to be around a couple insurance agents, people who will look out for you and your your longevity. The niggas who want to be at the club yep. and drinking and and, and, and and want to break you and your marriage up because they want they want to do that. You know what I'm saying? They like would. that. We don't have that transition. We don't think about it, that the same niggas that we was kicking with when we was 18 shouldn't be the same ones we with when we were 36. You know what I'm saying? It can be if yeah. we all have grown, but it's a lot of paths that people take. And I and not to cut you off, but I you think could. that's sometimes where it's been hard to say, but I think that's why I've always kind of separated myself. Mm-hmm. Like even when it came to school, I I had no clue about capital. 
all white school. Showed up on campus. I was still wearing 4XT, you know what I mean? Jabolts. I hey, no Jabos, okay. but them joints were definitely <laughs> too big. Right. And uh, Capital grew me, honestly. Like, not in a way that I need to be in line or a house nigga. It's more like it grew me to be a man, to know how to maneuver in certain situations, to know how to adapt. You know what I mean? It, it helped me in that way. And I, I fought to try to get back. Like, I want to transfer back to where my boys are. My dad was like, no, you're not going nowhere. And when I started working, I was always working. You know, when I was at finish line, it was like, you can't go to these certain places. And I feel like sometimes God is like, I'm stopping you from going to these places because there's something there that you may not want to be a part of. I don't know what's going on. That's I'm it. not going to rat nobody that's, out. But that's what it is. You know what I mean? It could be that too. But um, second fear, I'm sorry to take so long, but second no, fear good. I would say is um, – I'm scared to be the bad side of my father. My father's a great dad. Love that man to death. He would do anything for anybody. And he has, I don't want to say a dark side, but the side, uh, I say a somewhat abusive side that I talked about last time. Um, that's something I don't want to be. That Have that anger and that aggression to a child is something that I don't want for my son. Um, so I kind of watch what I say. Watch what I do because I don't want to have that negative impact on him for something um, that sometimes as a kid, you're going to be a kid, you're going to do things. Right. You know what I mean? So That's what kids do. Kids do stuff. Toddlers, Todd. Yeah, whatever, they tie, yeah, whatever you did. Kids, is, kids. Yeah, right. right. Toddlers, Toddle. Kids, kids. Right. Babies gone baby. Right. <laughs> gone baby. <laughs> yeah, so it's just a couple of things that um, definitely keep me up at night sometimes, but just try to pray about it and not worry, you know. So. I want to I want to bring up some of the things that was brought up in the Father of Paternity Facebook group. It says someone mistreating my child when I'm not around. Mm. Yeah, um, I have two girls, and either of them being violated in any way scares the life out of me. Oh yeah. Um, I have the other person said I have two daughters, and thought of them being sexually violated or physically beat by a man scares the shit out of me. I mean that will that will turn you into like forget rage, like you're ready to kill. It's over. It's over. That's it. You know? I mean, but if you think about it, that's kind of, it's all the same thing that we're saying. And and it's letting your family down. Yeah. It's not being able to be a father or a husband to your family. Mm -hmm. Because protecting and providing, caring, all of those things are duties that you're supposed to have. Yep. So not being able to do a duty. If you over here at work and something happens at home, damn. You know what I'm saying? That's I should have been there. I should have been there. And it's hard to be two places at one time, though. You know? Getting there at the last minute and then finding out you're too late. Those are my biggest fears. And I feel like all fathers, all husbands share those biggest fears. When your wife is out, somebody taking advantage, somebody uh, swindling her for her money, stealing something, breaking into your home. Because you definitely got to talk to your wife like, yo, don't don't, um, grab it. Somebody try to give you a flyer. Don't grab it. Like, Make sure you know what's going on. Be aware of your surroundings. Those type of things are our way of protecting our wives Mm -hmm. without us being around because there are going to be times where they're walking without us. Right. We're here now. Our wives are out with our babies somewhere else. Mm-hmm. So we hope that when we leave them, that we equip them with enough thoughts, you know, to, to hear us when, when you're doing something like, Hey, look up, make sure you pay attention. What's going on. Lock right. them doors. You know Man. what I'm saying? Make sure, you know, all that stuff. I get on my wife. <laughs> All the time she does this, uh, it kills me, man, for real. <laughs> but every time she comes home, she comes in the house on the phone. Oh, man. And it's like just chatter. Just so-and-so said this. Sister girl was telling right. me. <laughs> and I'm like, get off the phone. When you walk into the house, you, need to you be got aware. the phone on your shoulder. You got keys in your hand, groceries. You're not aware of the surroundings. Nope. Somebody may be waiting on you, praying on you to knock you down and take you. You know real what I mean? Talk. And that's real. And then also on the other end of that, I haven't seen you all day. Mm. Like I would like to, I would like to say what's up to you. Yeah. Like, can we make some eye contact? You know can I mean? we? Can we be affectionate just for yeah. the first ten minutes? Like, can we have that? Right, man. My wife is <laughs> coming in the house on the phone, driving in the car on the phone. Yeah, be aware of your surroundings. You got to because while we when we're together, that's what my job is. Mm-hmm. I'm scanning every, the every scene. moment. Yep. Yep. I'm looking at everything. I'm like a bodyguard yeah. to my wife, to my children. You I'm the secret be. service. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? What were you about to say? I said, um, so my wife is like the opposite. She's very aware. Like, I remember when I first met her, first time I went to her apartment, she was uh, living on campus. And uh, she was like, you know, nobody comes over here. Like, she said it. She was like, my ex-boyfriend and a couple of my homegirls, and that's it. 
And I remember like, okay, no big deal to me. But I remember sitting down on her couch and I felt like a stab. I was like, sharp little pain. This chick got knives yeah. hidden. <laughs> no, she had no. a big butcher knife in the couch. Like, yeah. just, yeah. she's just hey, Roscoe. Right. That, yeah. Hey, they this little shank shank. Yeah. You know, a little shank shank. Yeah. But she's equipped even to this day. And like don't That's test cool. don't test my woman in the car. She got a knife. You know, she keep her mace on her. Yeah. You know, she keeps stuff, something right next to her when she sleep. So don't even try to come to the crib. She gonna light your ass up. So, <laughs> but you talk yeah. about fatherhood. That's what that's what I be on. <laughs> right. I'm teaching my wife how to throw a punch. Yeah. How to protect herself. Yeah. I'm teaching my children. Mm-hmm. This is this is where you, you can look be touched. Good as a team. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. 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 Solid colors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody touch you. If somebody touch you, this is what you do. Yep. This is what you say. This is how you protect yourself. Don't mm-hmm. let nobody take advantage. As a father, those, I feel like, are your duties. You equip your team. And for you too, Jay, you got a son and a daughter, so you're teaching your son. Anybody even think about missing your sister, you better be on it. I'm teaching him how to protect his mother when I'm not there. So let's break it down and start from the beginning. When, Norm, when you first found out that you were about to be a father. Whoa. Think of (laughs) that. I remember that. that. Man, I do too. Think of that. And what fears did you have or what thoughts that were kind of like, uh, like, what are some of your fears when becoming a father? So I was super anxious because I kind of knew the moment when she, after she told me she was pregnant, I already knew when it happened. So I was like super excited when she told me. So I was like super anxious, right? Why, why he childish? Yeah, yeah he childish. <laughs> he childish. But no, I just. Yes, I had this. <laughs> Yo, when well, we knew though, right? Stuff, we, all, we probably have all had this. But I know, I know when it happened. <laughs> yeah. I do too. But um, <laughs> when she told me, man, we were staying, uh, we were transitioning to moving um, into uh, our, our spot, not our house now, but another apartment. But um, man, I was so anxious, but I was excited. Yeah. So adrenaline was rushing. I was excited to be a dad. I always wanted to be a dad. I know I was going to be a good father. Like, I know I'm going to be a good dad. But at the same time, fear overcame me with, man, how are we going to pay for this child? We don't have, you know, we're about to get our place, but we might have to get another room. You know, we might have to get a bigger place to stay already. Or How am I going to provide? How am I going to provide? How am I going to fund this this child? I don't have no diapers. I don't even think my car is equipped for a child, even though every car is equipped for a child. I'm just thinking about everything, every situation. Think about that stuff before you have a kid, though. You you can ride in a bucket with three three wheels with no threads. I thought about every scenario. Is he going to be okay when he's born? And I pray. I didn't care if I had a boy or girl. I just pray for a healthy child. Oh, man. That's all I care about. There's so many different things that happen with black women and childbirth that I just want to have a healthy child. So, it's, I mean, it was so many different emotions, anxiety, excitement, fear. Uh, I mean, everything you can name, I was going through in that pregnancy test when I saw it. <laughs> Everyone. Can I share with y'all? Go ahead. Of course. So, <laughs> so there's a legend in Columbus. <laughs> oh, no. oh, here I'm we go! I'm telling y'all my biggest fear. Legend in Columbus. I've been living here since 2000. My dad told me this story. He said he was in Central State at a Halloween party, and he was dancing. My dad is an alpha, so they had a big party. Oh yeah. He said he's in the crowd tearing it up. <laughs> he's doing the bump, all of that. He said he bumps into this brother and turns around because you know he turned around to see who it is. Like you bumped me kind of hard, and he said he turned around and looked up. And was scared out of his mind. <laughs> Big Head Tony was at the party. For those that don't know, Big Head Tony had, I can't even remember what the name of the disease was, but he had a large, like a very large head. Like a the water head? Like, bigger than that. It was like. Yeah. This is a real Thank person. You. Real. Brandy no, knows yeah, about Thank you, Brandy. Yeah. It's, it's like Columbus it's folklore, Columbus folk, like yeah. Big Head Tony. And so Tony's head was like, it was scientifically Larger than average. I think when he passed, he donated his body to science. Wow. And it was a a thing. Yeah. And so Tony was cool and everything, but it's just, whoa, right? And my dad had never seen him, so he was terrified. So coincidentally, my wife is related to Big Head Tony. Wow. My wife's (laughs) brother head is big. (laughs) My <laughs> wife had big. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I see what's when going she, on. When we were sitting down and she's like, man, you know, I wonder what the baby going to look like. And it just crossed my mind. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> you have my the biggest child head. may have the biggest head in the world. Going to look like the head detective uh, or, so, or in living color. Headed this way. Man, yeah. And so how you saying, like, you just want your child to be healthy, that really yeah. affected me. Like, damn, I wonder. It's her. Oh, man. 
Is my child going to have his big head? You know what I mean? Yeah. Is he going to have all his fingers, all his toes? He going to have yeah. sickle cell? It's so many ailments that can happen. You start watching these these programs mm-hmm. about children that's born with birth Efficiency. defects. Yep. Oh, my God. Cleft lip, spina bifida. It's so many things. Yeah. Hydrocephalic, everything. Yeah. And so I'm, I, I pray the most that I ever pray that my child is just born healthy. Healthy and capable. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I, That's one of those things where I, I spoke about this earlier today with one of my friends. This is when I knew I was like, when I knew I was about to have a child, I fasted for mm. two months Whoa. to mm. let God know that, hey, I'm serious about this. If you grant me with this gift, I'm letting you know whatever I have to do. Me and you in, in relation, we're going to make this happen. I know that I can't do this without you, God. Serious. One of my fears was, I, I spoke about it plenty of times, but I haven't spoke about it on here, but my niece has never met her father because he got killed when my sister was pregnant. Wow. So my sister yeah. and, and him were together for years. He was like my big brother. I don't have a brother. So he was my big brother. He was about four or five years older than me. And um, when my sister started getting big, she was complaining about she didn't have any clothes. So he, being the man who wanted to provide for his family, made a poor decision and tried to rob Mm. up somewhere. And the gun that he had got taken, and they shot him. My sister was... Six months pregnant. She, she, my sister was due in Feb- February. This happened in September. She had the baby in November. Jeez. So she was not six months pregnant. No, she was probably about six, five or six months pregnant. She had my niece early. But the thing is that my niece has never seen or heard or felt her father. Scared the everything out of me and this is when i was my senior year in college i'm you know i mean i call it senior year in in high school and i'm i'm a young dude this this affects me this affects my my niece is like my my first daughter she's i i I wanted to be there for her then i'm like now i'm about to be a black man about to have a child is she going to see me is she ever going to feel me or know that i love her like, mm. this is when I'm having my daughter, this is when the Trayvon Martin stuff going on. This mm. is when the Philando Castillo stuff going on. This is when all the black people are getting killed in front of us. My biggest fear is that I'm going to be a hashtag and my daughter's not going to know how much I love her. Wow, that's scary. And that's something that's- that, that I had to wanted to document all this stuff because what if? Like, what if I die leaving here? At least she knows she can hear her daddy's voice. Mm-hmm. She can see her daddy on video, and she knows that I've done everything I could in my years here to take care of this. But that's a big ass fear that I've had that I'm a I won't be here. Yeah, and that's just scary. Very and it's scary. just even even going past fatherhood, being a black man, mm-hmm. we have fears. When we like a habit that I have when I go into a place, a big place, a party, anything big, I have to walk around the perimeter. Yeah. And look at stuff. Mm-hmm. Scope. Very observant. Because I have a fear that I've seen people get jumped. I've seen people get shot. You don't know who your enemies are. You got to make sure you're cool. And now yeah. I got a family to, to take care of, too. Yeah, I got to make it home. Right. I can't just I can't just sit down, come over here, chill. Man, I was thinking about that at the Jay-Z and Beyonce concert. Like I was a little taken back to where it was a fear of what if somebody was to pull out a gun and just start shooting. Like that's And that's crazy because that happened when in Vegas. When the disaster strikes. Yeah. Like stuff like that, man. That that freaks me out. But I I try to stay prayed up to where I I don't worry as much. Yeah, that's the key. That you is gotta a, stay prayed. It goes up, man. back to your father yeah. being there, mm-hmm. holding on to you, your yep. heavenly father, letting you know that I have you. I'll take care of you. Not saying that's that bad stuff won't happen. Right. But whatever it is. It's God's plan, and he's going to take care of it all. This is going to turn into a gospel show, y'all. I'm telling you. <laughs> I mean, but <laughs> this is like, so real. Got, but when it comes to mixed. fear, you have to go back to that. Yeah. Right. Are you going to live in fear and not be able to live? You're, or are you going to let God be your peace? Yep. And that's where I had to keep going back to. And it kind of goes along with what your just thought process was. Me and my wife was at the movies. We were going to see um, – the Avengers. Mm. Um, we had a we had a day off. We took the day off so we could spend time together. Dropped our daughter off at um, the babysitter. Oh yeah, um, and saw the first movie of the day. This was like the weekend after um, it came out. Why? While we were in the movie during the fight scene, the alarms go off. Oh yeah, it right. Says everybody evacuate. Yeah, right. right now we everybody leave now. Um, this is not a test. Wow. What? While we're in the movies, 
Yeah, man. We're, you know what, what happens at the movies? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I live in a semi-white area. Somebody could have came distraught. The like, bah, 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 bah. Yeah, so yeah. we're in there like ducking down. I'm I'm covering her. Mm-hmm. Like, let's go. We went out the, the exit. They was like, oh, we we forgot to turn off our. We were testing, and that was actually a test. Uh, but in my mind, for yeah, those five yeah. minutes, you're freaking that's it. out. Yeah. I'm like, I, Dog, gotta, I don't know what to do. How am I gonna protect my wife? Me and my from wife only seen Black Klansmen, and in the back of my mind, I'm thinking somebody gonna come in here. It, yeah, act the shoot up, yeah. So we we right by the exit. They asked where we want to be seated. I said, "Are we sitting right here, tucked <laughs> away? That way, if somebody come in, we I'm thinking tactically, right?" Mm-hmm. And it, I mean, the to, fear- to, Norm, you said it. Like you have to be prayed up. That's the only way that yeah. you're gonna defeat the enemy is mm-hmm. to combat it with 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 God. You yeah. know what I mean? And when that's your, what he when wants. your daughter's scared of the dark, you got to turn the light on and exactly. show her that it ain't nothing there under the bed, down the stairs, whatever. Mm-hmm. How, when, you, when you when you fearful for your family, mm-hmm. cover them with prayer and let them know how you truly feel. Amen. That way they know how to move. Yes, sir. That's the only way to fix um, to combat that. Yep. So when we see our kids having fears, like what is your your reaction? What do what do you think that you um, how you want to combat that fear? Uh, that's the hardest part because you want to tell them it's nothing to be scared of, but for them it is something to be scared yeah, of. Right. You know what I mean? It's, it's hard. To tell them, like we talked about having a boy, it's like, stop being soft, toughen up, be a man. man like, look. that's those words right there are not loving words, and that's not how not you raise all. a man. So, for me, it's more so, you know, sh- show me what you're scared of. Like, my son, he was, he's, his imagination is growing, and he didn't like his toys or anything looking at him. He said, their eyes are looking at me, daddy. I don't like that when I sleep. Mm. So, I said, you know what I'm going to do? I turn them all around. You want to put them in the? In I can the, dig it. Yeah, though. I'll turn I can, them all I around. Fill up though on that one. Hey, which which one? Anybody else looking at you? Yeah. No. <laughs> all right, cool. All right, <laughs> point cool. them out. Right, point them out. out. I got yeah. you. I take them down, son. Iron Boy. Man, you hey, right, right. right. <laughs> People elbow. I will rest them down. Take them here exactly. with it. Yeah, but um, yeah, son. right. <laughs> but that's what you got to do. You got to be this this superhero to your kids because they look at you as that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's hard because I'm still learning. On how to combat that fear for him, yeah. but something like that when it's going to sleep, it's like, all right, you know, I definitely pray before we go to sleep, and that's one thing he'll say too, like, Daddy, does Jesus is he he going to protect me when I sleep? I said, I prayed, I told you, he will. So prayer, and then whatever's looking at him, I'm turning him around or throwing him in the closet or something. So it, it's hard, but different fears have different levels, and each year or two is going to be something different. Jay, do you have a 11-year-old son, correct? Correct. And a 6-year-old daughter. So, what about social fears? What about what does your son go through now? Like what is the thing that people or kids his age Yo, are having fears about? I'm glad you said that, man. My son just graduated from Shady Lane Elementary School, and he was supposed to go to 6th grade right next door at Sherwood Middle School. And Sherwood Middle School is like thug training. For these kids, <laughs> I'm telling you, it, I, it's it's middle school kids freaking black and mild. Right. I, I I, for real, it's they freaking black and mild. They kissing, what? they having sex. These children, I mean, like <laughs> sixth grade having sex. That's that's that's, mind, that's ridiculous. Sixth, seventh grade having sex, smoking weed, getting high, drinking. And so my son told me, like, Dad, I don't want to go to that school because they're drinking drugs they're doing these things he, he knows, knows he knows yeah. kids like they all walk home from school and you'll see the kids like rolling up smoking black and miles and walking through the neighborhood my That's son is crazy. like i don't want to do i don't want to be around that stuff that i don't want to go to that school me and my friends that i hang with we don't want to go to that school so i'm talking to my wife we put both our children in patriot mm-hmm. patriot academy which is k through 12 and it, it turned out to be a blessed situation because they're a little more strict on how these kids interact with each other. Right. The, the high school kids is over here, the middle school kids, and everybody's separated okay. even though they're still together. They got uniforms. It's just a totally different world That's what at we Patriot. Need. And it's, it's the next neighborhood over. But um, the, question was, the question was fears for my children. I didn't want for my son to get swept away in this world. I didn't want for my son to just become a nigga, another nigga, right? right, right. I didn't want for him to – be just a regular East Side dude. This how we do it. This how I was raised. This what I grew up in. I wanted him to be distinguished and set apart from today's reality, from society. And so my biggest fear is that, like, the enemy is going to take my child from me. 
and teach him how to do all of these things that I didn't teach him. You know how you come home and your children, your child is saying something. You're like, damn, where you learn that from? Right, right. Every, so, every you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> how do you know the song? For right. real. So my daughter now is like, hey, bro. And I'm like, who? What? Wow. What? Yeah. Who, how old where is she did you get? get that from? She's six. six. Talking about, hey, bro. And you know that's a Columbus thing, bro. Oh, it's got it. Eastside hey, in particular. Yeah, east side, to be exact. Bro, where you going, bro? Bro, bro. 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 And bro. so my daughter's saying that now, and I'm like, no, me and my wife don't talk like that. Yeah. Who taught you that? I don't want for anybody to teach my children something that I didn't teach. But that's going to happen, though. It's, it's going to happen, and that's you, a fear of Right, her. but you have to equip your kids with enough knowledge and background of instilling them whatever it is that you want them to be. Who they are. Who they are. And that's what my dad wanted to do for me. Like, my dad... Man, I remember we was wearing do rags. My dad was like, "Take that junk off your head, boy. You gonna leave this house? You look like a man." My dad, I couldn't have braids. I mean, I grew my hair out in like middle school and high school. He would never let me get braids. He was yeah. not having that. No do rags. Pull your pants up. My, and my that's good. Called them plats. Boys running around with these plats in their hair. <laughs> plats. Hey, old school. But like, but no matter what my dad taught me, my friends still had an influence on me. Yep. And you know, we did some things that I. You know, I don't say I regret, but, you know, we've done something that we shouldn't have done. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I know my mom prayed for us because we was always protected. No matter what happened, I feel like I've always been saved. Like, it could have been one wrong decision that I could have got caught for. Yeah. I could be in jail right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. But things like that is where you just pray that your kids just listen to what you say and just let them know, like, look, don't follow everything that these kids are doing. Like, and that. A lot goes with the environment that you have your kids in. So I have a question that me and my wife debate over. De debate over. So we're almost in the process of getting the house. You know, we're we're preparing for that. We're trying to figure out like where if we're in Columbus, where are we going to be? Mm -hmm. She wants to be like in the suburbs. I kind of want to be closer to the city right. because of my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And um, I just like to be around people that look like me. Yeah, I don't feel comfortable. As I feel like I could in the suburbs, right? Right. Because I know that if my house is too nice, my house is going to be too nice. I'm going to get um, the police called on me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I'm not supposed to be in that neighborhood. I never right. feel welcome. So, what is the best thing for our kids? Is it best for our kids to be in suburbs? Is it best for them to be in the city? Like, do you want them to be like in private schools but hang around their hood cousins? Mm -hmm. like, what do you think would be a good balance? I think it's both. Honestly, for me, my dad moved us from. A hundred, uh, where were we on? Hundred thirty-seven on uh, Kinsman in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Moved us to Cleveland Heights. Talk about moving on up, man. We was in a beautiful neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Cleveland Heights was amazing back in the day. It kind of fell off a little bit, but I remember moving up there and being around, you know, black kids, white kids, a little bit of everything. But my, his whole family was still in the hood, so we still went to a yeah. hundred ten. You know what I mean? We were still over there off of Kinsman. Yep. And that's what I think helped mold me to be just, I don't want to say versatile, but it helped me well to be. Rounded. Yeah, very well rounded. So you got your hood cousins. I think yeah. every kid needs to be around their hood cousins. Yes. You should. You got to learn these new dances. You got to learn these songs. <laughs> but at the same time, you, you know what I mean? What if your kid is the hood cousin, though? But <laughs> my Brax is not the hood cousin. The thing is, my dad and his wife have, I want not adopted, but they took in this this kid. That's going to be like their grandchild. Um, you know what I mean? His parents, I, I don't know their situation, but the kid is a little hood kid. Um, but he's, he's. I love a, that term. But he is, though. But he, neighborhood kid. But he cool, though. But him and Braxton, when they get together, they love getting them together. My dad loves bringing DeMonte and Braxton together. DeMonte. Yeah, DeMonte. Know. That's so good, man. <laughs> little hood cousin. Call your hood cousin. What's but that DeMonte? DeMonte. Yeah, of course. But yeah. he knows all the songs. He knows the dances. He was singing Kiki and Braxton looking like, who is Kiki? It's like, you want to you, you talk about these trains? Baby's kids. <laughs> yeah. The little Leon. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly how it is. Leo. But Braxton... I want him to be very educated. I want him to be not just proper, but, you know, well-versed. But at the same time, I want him to be loose enough to go hang around his hood cousins or just hood friends or whatever. Like, I want him to have both, a balance of both. But it's, that's the difficult part. Right. <laughs> For me, it's culture. I want my children to have black culture. I yeah. think that's where mine is. is you know what I mean? want them to be within themselves. And, and know about our culture. 
Go ahead, my and, bad. and my son gets it from being in the barbershop uh-huh. because I mean y'all are here, so the way that we talk is almost in its own language. It's mm-hmm. a cultural language. We can be talking, and the whole shop can go into. Uh, coming to America right. reference, and then we'll jump to Friday, and the mm-hmm. next thing you know, we talking about black movies for an hour, mm-hmm. right. only to bring it back to the original conversation. Right. And we can all speak the same language. If we was talking or something, and Daryl brings up a scene from Martin, we all know what he means. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, Martin. <laughs> I didn't want to go to Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> real quick, before y'all finish, man, I got a friend that has no clue what that is. Man, I got a friend that, him. Hey, he, he He's has. He's not your friend. Dog. Man. He, I remember in the chat, man, we said something, and he was just like, that must be one of those funny show references y'all be watching. Uh, boo. You know, hey, boo. He's not your friend. Hey, Wayne Brothers Martin, no clue. Yo. No clue. And see, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. I don't want for stuff like that to go over my son's head. I don't want for when we talk about a scene from Do the Right Thing, mm-hmm. uh, somebody sm- uh, stepped on your Jordans, and my son is like, what are you what talking do? about? Yeah, exactly. What are you I'm doing with somebody Boston. some of your J's? He's from Boston. I don't get it, Dad. You know what I mean? I want for my cultural son Cultural references yeah. in that whole those, scene. Yeah. I want for him to pick up on those cultural references. I want yeah. for me and my son to be able to relate. When I sing a song lyric, I want for him to know what song right. and what it's about. When I tell him just beat it, I want him to go. <laughs> you know or what like I mean? Kick the leg song. Yeah, I, mean, I, want, I, want to, I want him to understand <laughs> the black experience. I want, to, I want for him to know what it means to be black. Not just my son, but my daughter. I got something, too, after Daryl has his uh, piece on this, but to kind of loop back around to that, something that Go I ahead. was thinking about. Go too. ahead. Well, think about, like, what movies would you want your son or daughter to watch? You know what I mean? Because all these movies in Brooklyn. Yeah. Um, Friday. Friday when they get even a little though bit they're older. Coming well, to America. Right. Old enough, right? But like Juice. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Bad Boys. All this. You know what I mean? I still want. I know it's. Listen. I'm not perfect. You know, I love God. I love Jesus. I pray. And I'm I'm a sinner. You know what I mean? And it happens. But, like, movies like that, I feel like it's so influential to yeah. us. You like, know what? I want, I I want Braxton to know about juice. Can I tell a story, man? <laughs> tell your story. <laughs> so, I like old flicks, like 70s flicks. You talking so like I'm, uh, Jackie Brown. Uh, man. So, I'm watching, uh, Bam 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 I'm watching Coffee Brown. I swear to you. <laughs> I'm watching Coffee Brown. And there's a scene where she gets undressed. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting down with my <laughs> son. It's in the middle of the summer. We got our shirts off. We sitting on the floor watching Coffee Brown, Pam Greer. And she gets undressed. And my son looks at me and says, I swear, man. (laughs) He had the delight. My son looks at me and said, Dad, I think I need to close my eyes. So I said, do what you got to do, boy. (laughs) But I ain't closing my (laughs) eyes. I I ain't closing my eyes, though. (laughs) I said, do what you got to do, boy. And he closed his eyes. Tight. He closed. He <laughs> shut his eyes tight. Like I shouldn't be looking at this. And it was just so funny to me as a father. Like I know what you're going through, right. son. And it's okay though. Yeah, it's cool. It's, yeah. This was last it's, summer, so yeah. he was ten. Yeah, I know yeah. what you're going through. Right. right. You know what I mean? He That's said, funny. "Dad, I think I need to close my eyes now." <laughs> Speaking thing, about yeah. like cultural and knowing about your culture, I never want my daughter to feel bad about her skin color, never. about her hair. Mm-hmm. I don't want her to feel like she's too thick or yep. you know her lips are too thick. I don't want none of that. Mm-hmm. That starts at home, you know what I'm saying? Yep. But I and I hate to use this example, but this is the most explicit and quick example that y'all understand. You know when you're in the suburbs, there's a black girl with white friends, yep. and she has like the bad weave or oh. the extra leave out that just like ain't matching with the rest. I don't want my daughter to be that, yep, yep. and I I don't want my daughter to to push away her culture. Yep. I don't want to have a, ding, a dingy chick that just doesn't know about herself mm-hmm. and where she came from, Word. and that what is what. I have to make sure that I have her with culture around. I want her to be around strong black women yep. who are lawyers. Ain't that yep. another fear that you have yeah, is yeah, that yeah. your children ain't going to be black, black enough? enough? Exactly. But, <laughs> but not too black. Yeah, like, but not too black. Not too hood. Right. But you know what I mean? That's And that's, that's a real life thing. And I think that we have to pay attention to the environment, the environment that we bring them in. And Whether you suburbs or city. You got to know the you, culture. Yeah, you still need to be cultured. Yes. Yeah. We, and, and that's, like you said, that starts at home. That's where reading the, the books about Africa, reading the books with Malcolm X and Martin Luther King and yeah. all these other great inventors and people of our past to let them know, like, we are great. We are the chosen people, for real, for real. And we can go on another right. subject another day, but we are the chosen people. And that's why they treat us the way they do, because we are the chosen ones. God chose us. You know what I mean? They want to talk about the Bible and talk about being over in Egypt. Ain't no white people over there. Let's be yes, real. Now. 
It is read, now. Yeah, it is now. But read the <laughs> description. Man. When, 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 when Jesus read his description, hair like really? wool, skin of bronze, and passing that to your children is the epitome of being a father. Mm-hmm. Giving your children the word, teaching, praying with your children is yep. the word. Even sitting down and listening to music with your children is. That's fatherhood one on one. Passing right. along that culture is Passing what on. your duty is as a father. You better believe I'm gonna have a black Jesus uh, picture when I give. Yeah. It's gonna be a black Jesus in my house, baby. And and those are the main fears that I think when it comes to environment, because just protecting our our kids, protecting our family, um, educational fears, making sure that they're just aware and having the correct education. Word. Because you want them to be equipped to figure out who they should be and what they need to be. Because I've said this once before, and I'll say it again. Kids cannot be what they don't see. So mm. if you don't have them around things that can elevate them and expose them, they'll never be able to be that. I never knew that I could own a business until I saw black people owning a business. Mm-hmm. I thought that all I could do was work at GM, sell shoes, mm-hmm. or deal drugs. Wow. Like That's all I thought that I could do until I came to Columbus and saw – Deontay and, yeah. and saw people who um, barbers barber shops that like even the barber shops in Dayton were still had like a black owner I mean a white owner like a, they own the building and the the people were just the black people were just, just it. I'm yeah. still seeing it now with the Maroon Arts Group yes like mm. that is monumental yeah that is so historic we need to see that to see to see a community band together and then spend their money together yep. and Man. this is just the beginning of what they're doing yep. but to see the Maroon Arts Group for my children to be involved yep. and be a part of that to have a black president yep. oh my god my children are already leaps and bounds ahead of where I was yep. at their age Sam. like you see people like growing their own food you see people being vegetarians for you real. see people who are DJs you see people on a magazine cover that look like you and that you know mm-hmm. like oh I could do that too then shout out to O Sharp shout out to hey. O Sharp being on the Columbus Alive right my in front man. of us that lets me know myself one day i'm gonna have myself on this and we we and three could be on the on the front of columbus with, alive with our children what are mm-hmm. what we doing right and that's that's what i need and that's what my my daughter needs and that's what your son needs and that's what your son and daughter needs so they need to have these examples with all these examples that will eliminate a lot of fears that we have because we know that we're setting the right stage for them to move on and up love man love yourself black love that's that's really all I had to bring. Man. Like, if y'all have any other fears that y'all want to speak on, I'm open to it. But I just had to at least let that know, like, yo, I fear, but I, I love a lot more than what I fear. Mm. I, I I love God. I love my family. I love my, my daughter way more than what I fear for what me losing my life. Mm-hmm. And not not negating it because it's a real fear, but I want to live in love. I want to live in peace, and I want to just try as much as I can. Well, if you believe in God— you know, the the one thing he gives us is the courage. You know, if we're godly people, he don't want us to live in fear. He doesn't. He didn't give us fear. That's of the that's of the devil. Fear is something that he wants to control. He wants you to believe that. You know, what I mean, something's wrong. Something's going to happen. But if you godly and you feel that love from him, he gives us that. He doesn't give us the the fear. That's not of God. You know. Right. That's it. I think that's how we're going to close this show. Let us know um, what else you want to hear, what your fears are, and how you got over your fears. We appreciate everybody who's been rocking with us. Um, I'm DJ Durrell. Follow me on social media at DJ D-U-R-L. I have my brother. Norm Strick. Follow me at Norm Strick. Twitter, Instagram. I love my family. I post a lot of my family, so you'll see yeah. that. And I'm Jeremiah. Come see me at the barbershop, man. Yeah. Come get a fade or something. Get a taper. Get an edge up. This is what we do. We're going to try to do this at least every other week. Um, Father and Fraternity Podcast. Follow us at Fatherhood. Father and Fraternity, one word on IG. And um, give us your feedback. Follow us on Facebook. Join the group. Fellas, we, we need to see more Fellas. of you. Yeah. We want to do more. Oh, and we did um, a brunch in the summertime for the fall. I want to be able to do a um, tailgate. So we'll find a football game where we can all, it can be kid friendly or not kid friendly, but I want us to be around each other. Real. That's it. Let's make it happen. All right, we'll see y'all till the next time. All right, Peace. one love.